not going to vote for you. Remember, they're not going to smack themselves I've in the head and the say, I've spent the last you know, 20 years of my life doing voter registration mm-hmm. and the like. I think uh, I keep a log. I've done vote personally, been out doing voter registration about 87 times. And the reason for it is the vote is so low and people lose their right to vote because they move. Right. You want to talk about reform. Now, that's what we ought to do. We ought to say that you can vote at your new address without filling a new application. Mm-hmm. Bring your ID and change, your, change it at the poll. You want to reform? 10% of Rhode Islanders, most of them white, most of them middle, upper class, are going to vote illegally this year mm-hmm. because they moved from North Providence to Lincoln without going to Town Hall, which is only open to four. Right. So, so th- they'll get in their cars and drive across our tiny state. And they're not even doing it for the reasons people think. Because they actually, I've I've talked to people. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I was Deputy Secretary of State, somebody wanted us to get somebody indicted. And I went and talked to the 23-year-old woman. And, of course, her mother made her do the voting. And it wasn't even scurrilous. It was, I told you, there are 10,000 people. Now, let me tell you my favorite thing before I go. And I hope some of the reformers are listening. Block Island has double the number of registered voters as it does adults who are legally <laughs> able. Are you listening? Ruh-roh. Yes. Can I say that again? <laughs> and they would have 100%. Now, you're supposed to have uh, Warwick, which is a very middle, upper class community, has about 86% voter registration. Providence has 76 now, you're supposed to have 85 or 90. 5% don't want to vote and 5% don't get around to it. Okay? Right. right. But and anyone else? Block Island has 200%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Now, we can do that with Little Compton. Not The numbers aren't as high. We can do it with all the coastal so places. All of the resort New areas. Yorkers mm-hmm. voting in Rhode Island. And where's Common Cause? Where is Common Cause? And if you add up all those numbers, and let let me be nice, and let's say they could have a voter registration of 90%. If you add up all, everybody above 90%, that is the difference between, certainly the difference between Mollus winning and and not winning, Mm -hmm. because, you know, he won by the skin of his teeth. Right. And it is the uh, very close, about 90% of the vote that Chafee got between him and uh, his opponent. And you want to talk about reformers not doing their job. Seriously. How, how long have you known this information? So I've known this, uh, well, when we were, when I was Deputy Secretary of State, they had about 110% voter registration, and we got ready to do something about it. Mm-hmm. But the people of Rhode Island uh, sent Ed Inman packing, which was a horrible mistake. Right, and so, and so nothing has happened about it, and it's gotten well, worse. Well, no, it's worse and worse because their houses are bigger and bigger, and right. they're richer and they're richer. Right. And they used to, you know, one of them would register. Now the oldest son and the mother and mm-hmm. the father. Well, th- as, long as, you, as long as you're getting away with it, why shouldn't the whole family join in? Correct. Well, no, because, again... Block Island isn't Block Island isn't the Block Island I saw in 1982. Right. Let me tell you, it didn't have five million dollar houses. Right. So uh, a lot of this illegal voting is 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 for that reason to keep the property values down. Uh huh. Senator Metz has been probably one of the most outspoken supporters mm-hmm. of maintaining the master lever, um, from the sense of you know a reflection of how his community votes and his community mm-hmm. they use supports. it. Um, do you think he's been unfairly targeted? Yes. Uh, the name calling has really been harsh. And uh, I don't know how reformers do that. Now, uh, John, uh, Common Cause will scream if you say that because they say we haven't called any names, and they haven't. But they're part of a coalition, and most right. of the members of the coalition are name calling. And if I were a part of a coalition like that, I would tell them, you put a stop to the name calling, or we, we will withdraw our, uh, our, our, our partnership. Now, that's the answer to that. And so I don't buy his that th- that Common Cause hasn't called names. And League of Women Voters tell me they haven't called people Yeah, names. it's good for you, but Correct. T- talk to your, your so, allies. So, uh, so the, num- the journal talked about a black senator obeying his Senate masters. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> and I don't believe, other than some 14-year-old, that they would know n- not to do that. And those editors are 60 years old. Uh, they live in the same world I do. And you don't say that about a black man. No. No. 
No, and particularly someone with his distinguished record of honesty. Um, I've <laughs> the couple of times that I've called Senator Metz, you know, it's remarkable. There are there are senators and representatives who are approachable, and then there are senators who will actually embrace a non-constituent like myself mm. and actually explain and work with him on the issues. And I've found Senator Metz mm. to be nothing but respectful of both the people he works with and the opposition. Well, he's crazy about his constituents. You know, he's old-fashioned. <laughs> no, that's... that's so, mm. so where where do we go from here? What's your take on the situation? What's going to transpire? Well, I'm waiting for uh, the Senate President not to move this forward. I believe it's a non-issue. I believe it's a public relations gimmick, and she should act accordingly. Then I'm going to ask her in writing to put together a commission to look at all voting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Block Island. Right, to look, <laughs> to look at the real lever. abuses and the real yes. problems. Uh, I want... Uh, voters to be able to change their information at the polling place. Now, this is hard because you can barely vote half the time there, and so they're going to be nervous about right. offering that option. But there are a whole lot of innovative things. And then finally, technology. Do you know what we could do that we do not now do, including educating the voter? Seriously. I would like every candidate to create a biography, a profile, an uh, autobiography, send it to the Secretary of State who go through and vet it a little bit, not too much, and then send that to every voter electronically. Yes. We could do that. We could. Well. And, and people, I think, would read it. Yes. But, those same, but those same groups that are promoting, as you point out, this sort of fiction about the master lever, are they suddenly going to have a deathbed conversion to good government and want to promote that level of voter information? Uh, they don't need to. All we need is the Secretary of State. That's all. A non-politicized Secretary of State. You, I think the Secretary of State, uh, I hope your memory's with, you, with, with me on this. Uh, there have been two Secretary of States who lost their jobs <laughs> over the configuration of the ballot. Right. You would certainly lose your job if enough candidates said that you messed with their autobiography. Let, let, uh, right. So I don't think it'll happen. Unfortunately, we do have to hold it there. Mr. Rickman, a pleasure as always. Chris, P.O., great job. Don't forget, if you miss any coalition over the air, you can go to coalitionradio.us and check out our podcast and listen on demand. That's coalitionradio.us. Until next time, you're tuned in to AM790, your station for talk and business.